pray you guys are all well. Listen to me and listen close. This is the episode of all episodes. We've talked about this episode coming, and it is here now. Listen to me. I know you've been hearing about the red heifers. We're going to talk about that. I know you've been hearing about summoning of the Antichrist. We're going to talk about that. But we're going to go deep into revelation on it, deep into the spiritual on it, what these people are not talking about. They're not truly giving you full truth. And that's what we're going to give you here today. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. I'm going to try to make this as accurate and as fast as I possibly can. The red heifers are in Israel and they are about to be sacrificed. We've talked about this on my station uh, probably two years ago. And we talked about how the red heifers were here and everybody gets sacrificed. However, the Jews believe that the Messiah is going to sacrifice the red heifer. So whoever they believe the Messiah is, is going to be revealed. You do understand what I'm telling you. This is the biggest biblical prophecy you could possibly have on the return of Yeshua. I don't think you understand it. Too many Christians probably don't even know what I'm talking about because too many of us don't learn the spirit and truth. Glory be to God. He led me to a ministry. He led me to a bishop that teaches the mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. Because we can talk about things like this. Do you understand that the Jews may think that they need to do this in the physical but we need to understand it as the true Jews in the spirit. Romans 2.29, we are Jews inwardly in Christ. Hallelujah. Galatians, Galatians 3.28, there is no longer Jew nor Gentile, but we are all one in Christ. We, as, as Christians, we have to understand things like this spiritually, which is why we need to get back to spirit and truth with the early church fathers taught. Because when we don't, we don't understand things like this. We understand things like Christmas and Easter. We have to get back to spiritual truth. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. So understand this, because the Jews use ashes from the red heifer mixed with pula siloam to purify for purification. So if if they believe that they're about to sacrifice a red heifer, they believe that purification is is about to happen. Do you get what I'm saying? So if they believe that in the physical, we have to understand that it's about to happen in the spiritual. First, the natural, then the spiritual. Glory be to the Lord. You have to understand there has not there has not been a red, red heifer found nor sacrificed in, in the last 2,000 years. And now all of a sudden, there's red heifers in Israel. You, you understand how hard it is to get a red heifer without spot or blemish? What does it say the Lord's coming back for? A bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Understand, people, what's going on Verse here. Verse chapter 19. Now with all the bloodshed on the Temple Mount down through the centuries, the Mount itself must be cleansed before the Temple can be built. According to the Torah, Moses prepared the first red heifer, and from that time until the destruction of the Temple, only nine heifers were prepared. There has been no proper red heifer in Israel for the past 2,000 years. The difficulties of finding red heifers anywhere is that they are not only rare, but the animal must meet the requirements as stipulated in the Torah and in the Oral Talmud. The five main criteria for establishing the proper red heifer for the holy purpose of purification are it should be completely red with no spot or blemish. For the first time in 1900 years, uh, as of November 15th of last year, we have at least three, possibly four, red heifers that are fully qualified wow. and of age. Wow. First time in, in, in 1900 years. Is there a plan that you know of to sacrifice, to slaughter them in the near future? So the, the plan starting about six months ago, e even earlier last summer, they, they were waiting for them to become qualified in November. And so I, I was thinking, hmm, they could really do something in November. But what they talked about was waiting until Passover, which is April 20, Passover 2024, which is April 22nd of this year. And they said, well, this was, this was the Temple Institute and the Bonet Israel group. They said, well, the plan is, is to do the ceremony on the Mount of Olives. They have the property. Yes. And uh, we'll it do- It has to be done on the Mount of Olives. It has to be done on the Mount of Olives. The Mishnah, which is the, the, the oral tradition written right. down, 280, says very clearly that. And they have the property there. There's actually two properties that are potentials. But um, they said between Passover and Shavuot, which happens to be June 12th. Now, they chose that window 
just just because they wanted to coincide it with some Jewish festivals. Because during the Jewish festivals, there's more interest and there's right. excitement. And I remember asking Byron uh, in an interview I did with him, does it need to be on there? He said, no, it doesn't need to be. That's just we wanted to, to bring it up. Well, at the time, um, this was and this was prior to October 7th. And, and even later, as we heard about with Hamas, um, I was always skeptical, honestly, that, that they would do it that way. He, he, Byron had told me that uh, he said, hey, you know, pray for me. I'm, 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 working, I'm working on trying to get live stream for 800 million people. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, but that was... Bef- I would be watching. Yeah. Many religious Jews believe that the temple needs to be rebuilt in Jerusalem before the Messiah can return. And the red heifer cow is required for them to sacrifice and usher in this third temple period. And as we speak right now, there is a massive altar being prepared for the red heifer sacrifice ritual in Jerusalem. Now I find it interesting that within many religious Jews, they believe they can help usher in the coming of the Messiah. And to illustrate this point, check out this moment from 1990, where the current Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, meets the legendary Rabbi Rebbe. This is the rabbi that we recently covered in our reaction to a Dr. Michael Brown video that many Jews believe to be the Messiah, and many were expecting him to rise after his death. So this is not their first encounter, and the rabbi makes this point to Benjamin Netanyahu. Listen closely. Since we last met, things have progressed. He says many things have progressed. What hasn't changed, however, is that the Moshina, the Messiah, still hasn't come. So do something to hasten this coming. We're doing, we're doing. Apparently it's not enough. And notice Benjamin Netanyahu's entire demeanor on his face change as he's getting pressed about not doing enough to hasten the Messiah coming. Since many hours already passed today and it's still not here, there are still a few hours left in the day. So try still for today. There's wow. videos going around that are going super viral of the red heifers being raised up to be shipped over to Israel to right you're you're, you're seeing some of this stuff what do you what do you make of that stuff in terms of the connection to this being an end times preeminent thing mm. or setting off the course of events what, what do you think yeah. of that stuff so and, and, and are you keeping up with the red heifer stuff a uh, yeah. little bit I've, I've heard of it the fact that Israel exists right now and you have people and you have Jewish believers that um, seeing their Messiah, Yeshua as a savior. It's like something that really given an alert of like, oh, something we're close, we're end times mm-hmm. vibes. But I see what happened October 7th really change and shift the atmosphere in Israel. Mm-hmm. I hope um, that, um, and I'm praying that God will use that um, to bring people, more people in Gaza, all over the region, especially in Israel, mm-hmm. to know him because people lost hope. Mm. And I found my hope again in Yeshua, in, in Jesus, because I had I, I had where to look up. Mm-hmm. Many people don't have where to look mm. up, but we offer Jesus as, mm-hmm. you know, he is the real hope for humanity. Mm-hmm. And I think that when we will start seeing more Jews, Jew people, mm-hmm. Jewish people um, coming to faith, and I have also um, understanding that many, when a lot of Christians will show the love mm-hmm. to Israel and, um, and just show their love to their Jewish Messiah and cause them jealousy. Mm and then cause their hearts to turn back um, to, to to Jesus and mm-hmm. see, oh, this is our brother. Mm-hmm. This is our um, first one brother. Mm-hmm. That's when I would think Jesus is coming back. Because mm-hmm. he said, th- Jesus said, until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, mm-hmm. I won't be back. Mm-hmm. So there's like a key to his return in their salvation. Mm-hmm. You, so you're expecting revival in Israel, yeah. turning back to the Messiah yes. before he returns. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I think the the tough part is people seem to struggle because Christians tend to have a heart for Israel because of some of the end times prophecy. Yeah. Israel being established as a nation and winning all these wars does seem like a miracle. Anyone that knows the history.
hundred percent, but I believe it's gonna it, go. It's hundred percent. Yeah, the whole thing is gonna go. We have to build a temple. What is the red hat? Yo, this is wild. It's written for the temple to be rebuilt. That ushers in the end times. All the tools that they use within the temple need to be cleansed. In order to do that, they sacrifice a red heifer. There's only been nine red heifers ever sacrificed. The last red heifer to have been sacrificed was two thousand years ago. Account Some Jews believe that they should act as the fulfillers of prophecy that they themselves should build the temple, and when they build the temple, the Messiah comes. Then uh, the Messiah comes. Some of us believe that's Jesus, and he had a return ticket uh, when he came the first time. Uh, so he's coming again. Now, what does this mean? Where did this come from? Why are why is Hamas saying a hundred days into the war it was the transfer of these red heifers from Texas to Israel that played a role in October 7th? Okay. Red heifers are the de detestable religious myth, according to the leader of Hamas. A red heifer in, um, in the Old Testament to be sacrificed has to have uh, no more than two black or white hairs. And they check them. I mean, there's, I, I think there's probably, you know, I, I'm guessing there's a rabbi squad that goes out and they look and they check the heifer. It has to be unblemished, all red hair. And that's a one in 50,000 chance that your red heifer is going to be born like that. Um, and it cannot have more than two black or white hairs, uh, even before having their ears tagged a common practice with livestock that would uh, disqualify them for ceremonial use, but these four heifers remain blemish-free, and according to the Temple Institute rabbis, they want to carry out this detestable, uh, uh, what did he call it, a myth, and a ceremony before Passover. So just before Easter, only nine heifers have been sacrificed since Moses. Nine. And that happened between Moses and the year 70 A.D. And the feeling is, or the, the myth of the Bible, is the tenth red heifer ceremony would bring in the Messianic Age. Now, I don't know about you, but those people who are like, I think Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> They're so crazy. So I don't believe any of that craziness. Um, but um, they bring in the Messianic age. Now, people who are religious Christians, they believe that that is the first step to, believe, to rebuilding the third temple. And it has to be built before the Antichrist uh, comes and desecrates it. Of course, I mean, he wouldn't desecrate it, and then they'd build it. But he's, and then, then uh, the Messiah comes. Some of us believe that's Jesus. And he had a return ticket uh, when he came the first time. Uh, so he's coming again. Now, what does this mean where did this come from? Why are why is Hamas saying a hundred days into the war it was the transfer of these red heifers from Texas to Israel that played a role in October seventh? And yeah. be able to stay, you know, in the Lord and truly have joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Um, so I, I, I just want to say, as far as the red heifers, you guys, we're going to show you guys video that you've never seen before, right? We're going to show you cows that you've never seen before. Clearly, clearly these cows have never been seen before because it took a couple thousand years for one of these to come, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you videos and pictures and a lot of things that you've never seen before because we have people out there right now. I don't even believe it or not. Um, without further, without further interruption, let's let's go to uh, let's go to video A. It's because when they said people want to stop it, they really want to stop it, and it's very easy. You just have to walk up to them, poke a hole, and they're they can't be used anymore. They're not kosher anymore. There are a lot of people who want to see this not happen, and they are willing, and a lot of organizations. I don't want to mention the alphabets, but. I'll sound like a conspiracy theorist, but there's a re oh, there's a reason why there's a reason why they have to be this heavily protected. Let's go to camera B. I mean video B. Pause it one time. By the way, these are these are secluded areas, right? These these are hidden areas. Um, this is why I say you've never seen videos like this before because. You know, we have a brother and a sister out there right now who has recorded this, but they're being led to different places. They are um, tight in different spaces. Hallelujah. So these videos have never been seen before. This is the first time these videos are, are ever being seen of these actual red heifers. And these are, I repeat, these are the actual red heifers. Hallelujah. Continue. Now, these are the red heifers. Purely, purely red heifers that are being ready. Hallelujah. Take it down. Now, th this, this is what I want to uh, start out with, Bishop. You actually met the man mm. where these red heifers came from. Yes, Byron. Yeah. And, you know, because people think that they're genetically modified. Yeah. Oh, I, well, actually... The Jews were trying to genetically modify a cow that would be, you know, uh, sanctified or mm. prepared for this use. They were literally, the, I remember reading an article where they had sent the, the Israeli Biblical Institute, they had uh, sent uh, the requirements to a lab in Geneva, Switzerland. Wow. And it came back, they said, we can't do this. This can't be done. Mm. But the crazy thing is, when you hear the stories, when the stories that Byron told me about how they got these red heifers, which, by the way, are all a around here. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's crazy where I have lived at. These red heifers have popped up. So I don't know <laughs> if there's something in the water with me or something. Amen. But uh, this, these red heifers um, are are extremely rare. Right. They only come about when it's time for, you know, a temple to be cleansed, mm -hmm. or they were, or the Jew, the Hebrews, or the Jews were running out of uh, ashes uh, to put in the waters of the Pool of Siloam. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the testimonies was there was a farmer here near Houston that uh, Byron called him and asked him if he had any of these red heifers. He told him the requirements. He goes, yeah, I think I got a couple of them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, Byron sort of played it off. But he, he went to this man and, and, and this farmer, and the f crazy thing was when all the cows were calving, they are having their calves, right, this mother took her two calves and ran into the bush. Mm. Because as soon as they, they get the calves, they, they put a tag in their ear. Right. As soon as they put a tag in the ear, it disqualifies mm -hmm. that cow from being one of the red heifers. Why? There can be no other there there can be no other color hair on that red heifer. Can't have any white, black hairs. It has to be purely red everywhere, on the belly, in the nose, uh, which is extremely hard to do. Mm -hmm. Right? They they you just don't see it. So it can't have scratches on it. It can't mm. have holes in it, just like this rabbi said. If you punch a hole in it, it disqualifies it, right? Mm. If it has a scab on it, it disqualifies it. If the if the if the cow ran against a tree and, and scratched itself, it's disqualified. 
Mm, There's wow. so many uh, requirements by the Bible for this red heifer, uh, you know, to be pure. So, uh, or to be kosher, they call it, right? So the crazy thing was, is that he gets there and the mother had taken these two calves and ran in the bush. And mm. every time that uh, they try to catch these calves to tag them, they couldn't catch them. Wow. And so the mother would run with them and hide with them, which, I mean, you, the guy's a farmer. You think they would know by now. They're running around on Polaris's and quads, right? You, you think you can catch right. a cow. Right. Right. And cows aren't fast, right? <laughs> right, But right. they couldn't catch it. And the mother kept hiding them. The day that Byron went there, the cows came out to him. Wow. Now, I... You can call that coincidence. I don't call it coincidence. Supernatural. It, it was supernatural. It has to be right, supernatural, right. right? And so they inspected those two calves, and they were both ceremonially clean. A rabbi flew in from Israel, and um, and they it was proven that, or it was inspected and proven that these cows were ready for sacrifice. So they got two of those calves right off of this farmer. That's number one. Uh, number two, Byron was in Israel praying about, Lord, should we do this or not, right? And one of the key factors is they once they burn that heifer, it has to be, the ashes have to be sprinkled into the, the waters of the pool of Siloam. Right. And, and I'm going to tell you something, Isaiah. This really gets into the harlot of the book of Revelation mm-hmm. because that is also used for the for the uh, law of jealousy, mm. when the woman had to drink the ashes of the red heifer, and and uh, to see if she was cheating on her husband, mm. and so yeah. I I believe this is all tied together to the Book of Revelation where right. we're at now, right? And I'll explain. I will get into that more later. So in in reality, though, um, they needed the waters of the pool of Siloam. Well, the pool of Siloam has been blocked up for they think hundreds of years, right? where the waters weren't flowing. And Byron went over and prayed about this. And he said, Lord, I need a sign. And when he came out of the pool air, uh, the prayer area, the streets were filled with water. Wow. And so he said, what's, you know, what's this? And the him and the rabbi went up and the pool of Siloam had opened up. Wow. Right. Well, he was in prayer. So that's, how can that be a coincidence? Right. Right. So literally they have now, <clears throat> excuse me, taking that area and uh, prepared it, made it an area that the people come and, the, you know, they can relax there. We read the stories about the people to pull us alone, the blind man. Right. So amazingly, now that that, that spring is open, mm. and uh, which is, I believe, another sign. And there, there were many, many signs, many, many supernatural events where the Lord let this happen, right? And I I think a lot of people need to wake up that, you know, people are, are, there's people that are literally thinking that if we stop this event, Mm -hmm. we can stop the coming of the Antichrist. Right. Which is almost comical to me. It sounds like a cartoon. Right. You know, we're going to stop what God's doing, right? Right. It's like, that's ridiculous. But anyway, yeah, so many supernatural things pointing to, God doing this and not man. Right. So a, a mother and her calves ran into the bush. <clears throat> the, the mother who had, you know, a, a spotless blemish, no blemish on her calves ran, ran into the bush. And then when Byron went over there, came out of the bush. That's oh. supernatural. Talking prophetically as us as a spiritual temple, right? So when we talk about the red heifer, it, it's the same. Mm-hmm. What? is this red heifer symbolize what is going you know what day did they they what day did they sacrifice the lambs passover right what day was jesus crucified passover right those lambs according to paul could never take away sin that's what paul said right meaning every lamb that was ever killed could not remove one gnat of sin out of you mm-hmm. right but jesus came the lamb of god and he was crucified at Passover. What time? What did he go on the altar on the on the third hour? 
right? And what time did he come off the altar? The sixth hour. That's the that's the evening and morning sacrifices. So God in uh, in the Hebrew and in the feast, he did everything on the days and the hours with Jesus to show us that what was really what was meant and intended. Mm-hmm. So Jesus is crucified, right? In the temple, he's the lamb of God. On the feast of Passover, three days he resurrects, not on Easter. Easter, Easter is a pagan holiday. Right. That's what I mean. Satan has put this stuff in the church, mm-hmm. right? He was resurrected on the feast of first fruits. Mm-hmm. First fruits is when the Hebrews went through the Red Sea. And Paul says they were all baptized. So when Jesus is resurrected three days later on the feast of first fruits, we're going through a baptism. So keep your head 